It is Wednesday, March 23rd in the NBA, and I'm back my favorite plays. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot. Quick recap from yesterday. We followed up our 3-0 sweep with a 1-1 one one day. Not too bad, losing a little bit of juice on the day. Wendell Carter Jr. does finish two rebounds short, but the Greek freak Giannis Attentacumpo easily cashes his over 11.5 rebounds. It was a no-sweat bet. He had 11 and a half time. But our leans did very well. If you'd watch the videos all the way to the end, you normally hear me talk about a couple leans, a couple plays that I might not add as the officially as official plays for our card, but there are plays that I really like, and those leans did very well yesterday. So hopefully you use those to your advantage. But either way, if you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. We're grinding towards 29,000 subscribers. We appreciate all the new people joining the community. We really can't do it. Drop a like too. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. Let's let's have a good day today. Now, a couple notes. Our weekly live stream is tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be live on YouTube and on Twitter. If you want to go follow us, we're at Colin or Shot on Twitter. Also, go follow all our social medias on Instagram, on Facebook, and I think we're in on, in on TikTok. All at Colin or Shot. But either way, our, our weekly live stream, we answer all your questions. We'll be at 6 p.m. Eastern time, powered by Dimers. We'll be answering all your questions about tonight's NBA slate. Number two, our weekly podcast will be live at 10 a.m. Eastern time, just prop, maybe even live by the time you're watching this video. Definitely go check it out. We talk all things NFL, MLB, and basically any other current event in the sports world. So definitely go check it out. We're really cool. And our, I think this is one of our better podcasts as of late. So definitely check it out. It'll be linked in the description once it is live. Also, shout out again to our COS All-Stars, the people that keep supporting the community our newest ones, Stephen C., Kyle Bracey, and DJ Castellano. We appreciate you all for joining the community. If you want to support us, click that join button on the channel or click the link in the description and pin comment. It only costs $2.99 a month and it helps show your support for us for everything we do for free. And you get a couple of cool extra perks like getting that plays an hour early. You get some cool custom emojis and a bunch of other things. So definitely check it out. Click the join button or click the link in the description. Let's waste no more time. Hopping to the best bit of the day. We lost yesterday with Wendell Carter Jr. Today we're going with the juiced one, but it is Jalen Brown. And we're taking us under three and a half assists, minus 136 on FanDuel. Now, I won't lie to you. I don't like betting a lot of juice. Now, you saw us take Giannis's over, which was like minus 127. Did get up to like minus 135. And then dropped as the day went on. And then you saw us two days ago take Russell Westbrook's over. But I don't I don't lay juice unless I really, really think there's a good edge, regardless of the juice. And I would play this up to minus 150. The line somehow goes to two and a half. Don't play it at two and a half, in my opinion. But look, we look at this, and I really like this under. Now, Jalen Brown, over the last three games, he has one more assist than you and I. He has just one assist over his last three games. He's played 101 minutes, just one assist to show for it. It's a points and nothing else. And honestly, the Celtics have been playing very well as of late. Why change the recipe for success? It's not necessarily like his teammates just aren't making shots. It's like they see a, a pass from Jalen Brown, like, heck no, we're not getting this guy's assist. And they're just chucking it at the wall. And that's not it. He's averaged 3.3 assist chances over the last three games. And even if he cashed 100% of those assist chances, he'd still be under. Now, in fact, he is the seventh person on the team in terms of assist chances. He's behind all four starting players like Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, Robert Williams too. And then he's also behind Peyton Pritchard and Derek White. So all those guys are averaging more assist chances than Jalen Brown, despite him playing a ton more minutes than several of those guys. Just like Marcus Smart earlier this season, really he's just, well, no, you look at earlier this season, Marcus Smart was saying, no, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown don't pass the ball. And while they started to pass a little bit more, Jalen Brown's back to not really passing a whole lot. He's under this line in 37 of 58 games this season, 63.7% of the time. And that gives us, and we look at the line from minus 136, the implied probability right around 57, 58%. So as long as we cashed a little bit over that in terms of these juice props, we'll be profitable on the year. Brown, Brown is averaging 3.3 assists per game on the year. And look, with the addition of Derek White, he doesn't really have to move the ball too much. Derek White's running the point while Tatum and Smart are off the court. And look, Brown did have a stretch early into March where he was hitting this over pretty frequently. That was against teams like the Nets, the Hornets, the Pistons, three teams that don't play a whole lot of defense. Today they get the Utah Jazz, one team known for limiting opposing teams' assists on the season. The Jazz are allowing the fifth fewest assists per game overall. And over the last 15 games, that's down to the fourth fewest. Look, Brown's specific position shooting guards, they've allowed the fourth fewest assists per game on the season. And look, Jazz, he's played the Brown. He's Brown has played the Jazz nine times in his career, only gone over the line once. That was technically his last game against them last year, about a year ago to the day, March sixteenth, twenty twenty one. He had seven assists versus them. I think that's a little bit more of an anomaly. And so you look, if you look at his games with thirty plus minutes against the Jazz, here's how he's finished: seven, zero, two, one, one, and three, and zero assists. Barely getting close to this line. Three assists finished it on the hook positively for us. So. I like it. I Hopefully, it's a sweat-free winner. We'll take his under three and a half assists as our best bet of the day, minus 136 on points.
points bet. Now, I believe it was minus 144 on FanDuel. I would take it up to minus 150. Now, let's keep moving on and let's go to a CLS Hall of Famer. And it pains me to say this. DeJounte Murray, we're taking this under 25 and a half points, minus 114 on FanDuel. Now, I would play this at 24 and a half as well, if that's the line that you guys get. It was 25 and a half on FanDuel this morning, and that probably will be gone soon. Maybe by the time this video is, probably definitely by the time the podcast is out. But still, I like 24 and a half, and you'll hear why. Now, DeJounte, we know. He's one of our favorite guys to bet on all season long. He's been cashing his PRA over like it's going out of style, and the man's been absolutely glitched. There's a reason he's a calling our shot Hall of Famer. He's made us a ton of money all season. And we're asking him to make us some money today, but in the negative. We're taking his under, and there's a couple of different reasons why. Now, Murray's last 10 games, he's hit this. He's a perfect 5 over, 5 under. So, not too shabby. You'd be losing juice if you took his under every single night. But he scored just 17 and 19 points his last two games. And my argument here is that this line is too high. Now, look, Murray is averaging 20.8 points per game this season, yet this line is 25 and a half, four to five point, four to five points higher than what he normally does. He's under this line, 25 and a half, in 47 of 63 games this season, 74.6% of the time. If your line is 24 and a half, he's under that in 43 of 63 games. He's only landed on 25 points four times this season. Granted, he's done it twice in the last 10 games, but I don't see it happening too often. Now, Murray probably taken on obviously more of a scoring role as of late but I don't really think he needs to do that in today's matchup against the Blazers we know the Blazers are a weak team the Spurs eight nine point favorites in this one and look they did come off a good win against the Pistons a couple days ago but look this is Murray a guy that's normally not known for ball hogging if you watch him there's a reason he's up in the top of echelon in terms of assist chances and assists per game this is a guy that's not afraid to pass the ball not going to see his teammates wide open say no nope, gotta get mine that's not what Murray is he's going to pass the ball to his open teammates and his teammates should be pretty open against the Blazers. Now, obviously, you look at the Blazers in their last four games, they've lost two of them by 29 and 30 points, so a blowout could help us in this one. We're not banking on a blowout, but that is a recipe for hitting an under. Also, along with that, the Spurs have blown them out earlier this season. Granted, that was a different Blazers team that they, what they will see today. Now, Murray doesn't necessarily have the greatest shooting performances against the Blazers team. He did score only 15 points against them back in December, but still, that was a different team than what he will see today. But in my opinion, there's so many ways he can go under. Only a couple he can go over, but we look at a bad shooting night. That could go under. We could look at him being more of a facilitator with 15 assists or something like that. That will help him go under in a blowout. Several different ways that he could go under, whereas you need a lot of things to go right. This game to be close and him to shoot well to, for him to go over. Trey Jones coming off the bench is healthy and he's been looking good as of late. Josh Richardson also been playing meaningful minutes and look, Dimers has him projected at 21 points. I like their projection models and I think 21 points is pretty accurate. I think his line should be 23 and a half. I think the 25 and a half is a little bit too high for me. So give me DeJounte's under at 25 and a half points and hopefully a COS Hall Star can count or COS Hall of Famer can cash for us once again and look I don't love betting is under but I think it's the right play today now for the remainder of the video let's look at a couple plays that I did consider and look you want to check the pinned comment down below for any plays we add because a lot of these plays do not have lines at the moment but maybe you're considering them and maybe after the video they have lines you're like how does Austin feel about this guy and you'll hear maybe he's in this play set list but let's look at my spread lean of the day first I like the Mavericks, minus the nine and a half points. I know they're taking on the Rockets. I know it's a lot of points to lay without Luka Doncic, but I think they take care of business early in this one, and hopefully they rest their guys the remainder of the game. Just like I'm hoping the Spurs take care of business early against the Blazers, rest their guys the remainder of the game. I think the Mavericks are going to rest, are going to blow off this Rockets team. Now, I don't, maybe they maybe they lose outright for all I know, but we've seen very time and time again this season, when teams are down their best players, they normally end up playing their best basketball. It's like they get, all the money goes against them. It's like teams are betting a ton of money, or people that are betting or betting a ton of money against those teams. And then they're like, nope, we're taking it personal. And that's what we saw. Like when the Sixers beat the Miami Heat, made no sense when they were down Embiid and Harden. They still got it done. We see the Grizzlies, a similar team. They're down John Morant and playing their best basketball. I think the Mavericks step up and beat this Rockets team pretty easily. So that would be my spread lean of the day, not an official play. Now let's talk about a couple other player props. Russell Westbrook over and assists. If they put this number at six and a half. I, guarantee, I don't want to guarantee it, but I probably would guarantee it will be in the added comment section unless it's for whatever reason super juiced at my six and a half. But we know Russell Westbrook, we took his over two days ago, five and a half assists minus 140. is a tougher matchup against the Sixers, but look, the last three games Russell Westbrook have aver has averaged 19 assist chances, much different from the rest of the season. He's really pushing the ball with pace, and I think that he'll be able to get this done at home against this 
uh, Sixers team. The Sixers have played better defense as of late, but they're going to chuck Matisse Thibel probably on LeBron, try to give him a lot of focus. And I really do like what, what Russell Westbrook has been doing. I think 10, 8, and 11 assists his last three. I think his assist chances are there. So Atlanta's over in assists if it's six and a half. Probably bet that it's in the pin comment section down below. Another one that I've really considered, wish we had a line, Tyrese Halliburton and Buddy Heald. I like their overs today in a revenge game against the Sacramento Kings. We obviously know the Kings. They don't play a whole lot of defense. They probably will be down De'Aaron Fox. I know they're for sure down DeMontis Sabonis. And look, this is a revenge game for him. I think Tyrese and Buddy Heald do have a pretty good game. Maybe Buddy Heald will lean a little bit more just because he likes to shoot a little a little more than Mr. Halliburton. But Halliburton took the trade. He was really sad after that trade. So I wouldn't be surprised if either of these or both of these guys have pretty good games. We'll see what lines they get as the day goes on. Obviously, you don't want to force anything if the lines are too high. Now, another guy I looked at, Devin Booker over in PRAs. I was typing up an analysis for it, but I'm a little bit skeptical. I don't know what the Timberwolves defense will play. Obviously, the Timberwolves grinding for the playoffs and wouldn't be surprising if they're chucking a ton of doubles and triple teams at Devin Booker. Thinking about that uh, that video of him in the offseason when he's, who is he complaining at? Joe Kim Noah, when he's uh, when they're double teaming him in a practice scrimmage and this is in the offseason. That is, that's comical. Funny video. Um, Either way, Devin Booker, don't mind his overs tonight. I'm a little bit skeptical. See what the Timberwolves do on defense. Now, Donovan Mitchell over four and a half assists. So it looks like a super low line, so definitely take a look at that one. It's a really, I don't know why it's four and a half, so that's a little bit skeptical, but he's been crushing that line as of late. I know it's a tough matchup against the Celtics, but normally in tough matchups, he normally does a little bit better in the assist category just because solely the teams are putting so much focus on him. So it wouldn't be surprising if he gets those four and a half assists pretty easily. Kyrie Irving over in points versus the Grizzlies. Now, I mean, flip a coin. Well, who's going to play well, Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant? But you look at Kyrie, I think, what does he have, three games left on the season, given he can't play home games? He's probably going to play pretty well. We see Durant kind of resting in his last most... Normally, when we see Kyrie and Kevin Durant on the floor at the same time, it's normally Kyrie being the guy to kind of take over. Durant takes those games off because Durant knows he has to carry the team in the other 10, 8, 9, 10 games where Kyrie's not going to be there. So I'll consider his over in points. We'll see. The Grizzlies, like I said, have been playing better defense as of late. No John Morant. I believe the game is on ESPN, though. So we'll see about that one. And another one, I'm looking at that Magic Thunder game. I think there's some ability for some plays here. Trey Mann over in points would be an interesting one. I know he just absolutely put up a clank show the last time they played the Magic. But the Magic been getting abused by opposing shooting guards and point guards. And look, I know Shea Gellich Alexander is awesome. But Trey Mann's going to play pretty well. And sure, Trey Mann finally started knocking down some shots against the Celtics last game. I think scoring 35 points. So a couple of those guys will likely become added plays. Maybe some other guys that I don't even haven't even listed because we don't have lines for them yet. We'll see as the day goes on. But our two plays right now are two unders. Jalen Brown under three and a half assists and DeJounte Murray. We're taking this under 25 and a half points. Definitely check out that pinned comment section down below. I appreciate you guys for tuning into the video. And I'll see you guys on the tonight's weekly live stream at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And you'll see you on the weekly podcast, 10 a.m. Eastern time. It'll be linked down below and probably linked on the screen once it's live. Let's get after it. Let's have a great Wednesday, a great hump day in the NBA. And I'll see you guys again in the late live stream podcast and tomorrow. Peace out.